Show on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. U.S. Bank. Life keeps moving. We're here for every step. U.S. Bank. Member FDIC. Tonight's show is also brought to you by Zeppos, the home for the Cougar Coaches Show, where the Palouse comes to play and eat. Here's the voice of the Cougs, Matt Chazanow. Great to be here with you back live at Zeppos. It's a special edition of the Coaches Show. And we'll start it off with our Director of Athletics, Pat Chana. It's sort of a, an informal season and recap of sorts of the fall, a look ahead, and then we'll talk basketball a little bit. We'll get the lid lifted on some, some hoops discussions. We'll have the, the women's coach, Cammie Etheridge. We'll have the men's coach, Kyle Smith. We got Clay Thompson on TV. We do have Clay Thompson <laughs> on TV. Yeah, how's he doing right now? Uh, I, only two points, All right, but he'll get hot. But, yeah, always, yeah. always does. Yeah. Tight game in Dallas right now. Yeah. Uh, future uh, location for Cougar men's basketball. Baylor, right? Yeah. A couple Coug- weeks. Cougs against Baylor. Yeah. yeah. Rugged stretch coming yeah. up. For... Don't, don't talk ahead of the schedule with Kyle Smith here. He's in oh, He'll refuse. Yeah, he'll re- yeah, 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 yeah. He'll go. He'll, or here's what he'll do. He'll go. He'll go. Stop it. Okay, let's talk about it. Yeah. All right. Hey, let, let's uh, listen. I, I know it wasn't an Apple Cup that everybody had hoped for, right? Just to say the least, that was not the end result. But uh, you, you have a seventh straight bowl, and you and I need to tash, hash out a little bit of what's going on here. Bowl picture. We've got uh, off-season stuff coming up, and, and and these key practices for the youth of, of the team. And um, you know, the volleyball had a great win over over the Huskies. So th- there's there's a lot of meat on the bone here. Well, first, it, what an amazing weekend in Pullman. And I always tell people when you, when you're when you're a part of a, a a sacred rivalry, the best thing about having a rival is it brings out the best in you. Yeah. And if you were in Bowler Gym Friday night. With and if I don't, I don't know if people here in the in, in Zeppos were. Yep, you see, that brought the best out of Washington State because that crowd was crazy yep. and it brought the best out of our team. And then you go Saturday, the way that stadium looked, uh, filled with students. Uh, everyone was, I mean, it was loud. I mean, it, it, you know, the, the, the final score didn't go our way, but, you know, it, it was all to try to get that game back on a Saturday here, you know, because we needed students back. Huge because, difference. Huge difference, and, and, I th- and, and that just reaffirmed that decision because, you know, we have to get another uh, weekday game here to trade that off based on our current TV contract. So, but it was, that game's too important, and our students affect the game. And, uh, you know, and it, it, you know it, wrap, it kind of puts a little bit of a uh, pause on fall because, you know, football, Football's got a bowl game. Volleyball's got postseason. Uh, but uh, all in all, our, our teams. I know Todd Schulenberger's not happy about his year, but hey, hey he did. You know, it's, it, he's in one of the tougher conferences, and I think he hired, he signed the number one kid in the country. So love it. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, and then volleyball took off today for San Diego yeah. uh, to go play in the NCAA tournament. It's exciting. Yeah, it's exciting R- stuff. Really, really exciting. Yeah. yeah, that atmosphere was fantastic. I mean, again, the end result not what you wanted, but the. Martin Stadium, Giza Field crowds, everything. You want. Uh, second best crowd I've been a part of uh, game day in 2018. Yeah, yeah, and and I was new. I didn't understand how crazy this place can get back yeah. then. So it was just a nice reminder of hey, when 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 we when we come, when 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 the Cougs show up in Martin Stadium. Uh, it's hostile, and uh, I threw. I don't know if anyone saw on Twitter. I I, I threw Sean Deeds to the wolf to the wolves because we 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 discussed our our pregame plan was under no terms or flags getting planted in our logo. <laughs> so Sean took. If those who know Sean Deed, when you give him a directive, so me and him were getting killed on Twitter because he's literally he he had the ushers with the ropes, but Sean's standing right on that right <laughs> on that logo. So if that if some flag was going to go through that logo, it's going to go through, <laughs> through his chest. Sean. Yeah. <laughs> he's great. Yeah. He's great. I I love that. In 2018, in this game, and other games as well, if the stadium's full, false starts, delays, yeah. delay of game. Our, it, every it's time. amazing. It's they amazing. can't communicate. The designers of the stadium, the acoustics, and our students. I remember Coach Leach told me when I first got here, he said, just think of Wrigley Field and Fenway Park. Yeah. He's like, you're right. It's, it, it's a shoebox. People are on top of you. Uh, but we see it. We see it in volleyball. We see it in basketballs. Uh, hopefully, we'll, you know, baseball's building its crowd base up. But, uh, man, when our students show up, our, our, our student athletes feel it. But man, our opponents hate it, and that's very the best part. uncomfortable. Yeah, that's the best part. Very uncomfortable. Yeah. There, there's, no, there's no doubt. That's a really. I had never considered the Fenway Park comparison. Yeah. it's tight. It's tight. It's 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 awesome. It's Mike intimate. Leach brilliance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. Uh, there's there is some stuff that we can't usually talk about till it's done. You can't talk about recruiting. Yeah. Until it's it's wound up. Uh, we're not going to do that for football, but we can for the other two coaches. We'll talk about tonight a little bit, right? Recru- recruiting is is. Uh, well underway. It's about to be underway for football, yeah, but that's I'm, a different beast. Yeah, and how, how about Cammie and Kyle and what they've been able to do from right. a recruiting standpoint? And uh, just, just no, I mean, it's, it's nothing short of amazing. And, and you'll hear from, from Cammie. I, I tell everybody if, if – 
as long as Charlie Sledger Walker is gracing our campus with her presence, you need to go watch her play basketball. Yeah. It, is, it, is, it is worth the price of admission times 10. Yeah. I mean, she's an extraordinary talent. She does everything in the right way. And you can't argue with, I mean, we got one of the top teams in, in the country right now. And then on Kyle's side, I mean, we're, um, we're, we're, we're suddenly offensive, uh, shooting the heck out of the ball. Uh, and we signed arguably, I mean, one of the best recruits we've ever signed coming in for next year. And, uh, you know, just to warn everyone, football starting up with recruiting next week, the portal opens. So th this is a brand new environment. So I'm warning everybody who's listening, don't be shocked when you see names in the portal. It's just the way the world is. It's not an indictment on the coaching staff. It's not an indictment on the team. You're going to see every school in the country, every conference in the country is going to deal with, with, with kids jumping in. Unfortunately, we live in an environment where there's tampering uh, and, and there's inducements. I mean, this is, you know, Cammie and Kyle have probably been dealing it a little bit longer than football because basketball has been a mess for a while. But, um, but the nice thing is, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll adapt. That's what our coaches do. Uh, we're in an NIL environment. We're fortunate that we have options for people to get involved with the Cougar Collective or whatever it is uh, because we want our students, uh, student athletes to maximize uh, whatever opportunities there, there may be. But, um, I mean, this is the lifeblood of what we're going to do and you know it's going to be an odd week for Jake and the staff because they're going to have to get ready potentially get ready for a pre-Christmas bowl and with recruiting but you know I keep reminding Jake even though he doesn't want to hear it it's better than the alternative of not having bowl planning it's true yeah, very true nobody wants to be there so, so uh, there are a couple things I want to yeah. unpack there but I want to go back for a second NIL how does yeah. NIL relate to football basketball recruiting and what's about to happen well I the, the NIL is net positive for all 350 division one schools uh, it's net. It's it's negative for those of us that are competing at the highest levels of football, men's and women's basketball, mm. just because of the way recruiting is right now. So the the negative parts of NIL, which 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 is uh, not a fun place to deal with if you're any coach. I remember talking to Kyle the second the, like I ran. We were at an airport a couple days after we got eliminated from the NIT, and he's um, he's he's complaining about being a general manager. Right. And, and he has every right to do that, and it's just a very unique place. Now, Cami, on the other, like, like, like it, there is something special going on with our women's basketball program because they had no one going to the portal last year. Wow. So there, there's when you talk about um, um, maybe a sign of an environment, uh, maybe a sign that they love it here at Washington State, Maybe it's why they keep making history in that program. But, uh, but every program is different, and, and, and we take things year to year now because, you know, the reality is, is uh, life changes, goals change. And, uh, but the NIL piece is, is, is a struggle and uh, only because of just, just what happens in, in the three highest profile sports relative to just relative to trying to, trying to beef up rosters uh, with, with, you know, the, the reality is this. If, if, I'm, if, I'm in, if I'm in the marketplace and I know that I got a, I got a young player that's, who's, who's been taught the fundamentals by Kyle Smith just or Cammie Etheridge yep. or Jake Dickert, you know what you're going to get. And, you know, it, it's, it's, that's why we, in this environment, retention is almost as important as recruiting. And that, that's, that's where all of our coaches have to have their minds at. It's such a new – I mean, three years ago we weren't having this discussion. No, no. And you just look back. Someone asked me today, it's like, you know, you look at all, all the offensive talent – that you know, you know, when I got here, I could sit here and make a statement. Mike Leach was three deep at quarterback my first year here with, with what uh, Gardner, Tinsley, and Gordon. Yeah. You know, do those well, but do Gordon and Tinsley stay when Gardner wins that job in right. this environment? Right. You know, you just don't know. Yeah. But my guess is probably well, maybe uh, who knows? But uh, in today's environment, that that's a tough ask for a young person uh, that isn't really bound to the program or bound to the coaching staff, and it's just it's just the challenge. But it's the way it is. So like I said, when you see names pop in the portal, um, it's it's the environment. It's the way it's it's the way of the world, and we just got to keep adapting to it. We've even seen some portal entrants come back, right? That, that yeah. happened with Kyle also, right? Yeah. I mean, so, but it's just such a different beast. Yeah, and we're trying to manage it better. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on the one NCAA committee where we ended up putting, uh, I, I guess, uh, we, there's basically a, a total of 60 days to get in and out of the – or to de a transfer declaration, but it's really the intent is to try to stabilize our roster. Like, like once a season starts, like people going in the portal just isn't healthy for the current team because at the end of the day, we, we still need a healthy environment for our current student-athletes. Kyle uh, mentioned that uh, – uh, last game, uh, Mike Davis, who's the head coach of Detroit Mercy, played with Elo, actually, in like a showcase thing. Really? Yeah, like 20, yeah. 30 years ago. Uh, 
his son is the leading scorer basically in the country, right? He's a couple points. He went in the portal. Really? It's his son. <laughs> yeah, he went in the portal and he came back. You know, you never was going to go anywhere, yeah. but I don't know why. Why? Yeah. You know, just I, We always kid Bill Stevens. He would have been the first portal guy. <laughs> oh, like, he would have had a handout. And no look, loyalty. Look at, yeah, looking for inducements. Oh, tennis, tennis, tennis player Tennis for hire. superstar yeah. Bill Stevens, no doubt. <laughs> Leveraging his friendship with other famous yeah. people, exactly. right? non coups exactly. and the whole exactly. thing. All right, let's do that. Can I keep one more yeah, second? Absolutely. All right, let's do this. I'm going to keep a headset on Pat John. We're here live at Tepo, special edition of the show. We got men's soups, we got women's soups, we got Pat. One more segment with Pat next as we're live here at Zeppos talking all kinds of things, talking fall sports, talking basketball. That to do list you have needs one more thing chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting, anyways? Or hang out with just your dog, because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2020 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. And little Billy and... Santa, I knew it. You are real. Shh. This is so cool. Can I see your sleigh? No, I drive a Porsche now. Won it at Northern Quest's Upgrade Your Sleigh Giveaway. Good timing, too. That sleigh's nearly 2,000 years old, almost out of warranty. <laughs> the Upgrade Your Sleigh Porsche Giveaway at Northern Quest. Get one free entry daily. Play for even more. Details at northernquest.com. This is the U.S. Bank Cougar Coaches Show on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. This is Cougar Basketball. Kicks it in the lane. Gay, hammer time. Two-hand flush filling the lane. He wants Mullins give him his eight three. The ball's in. Tune in all season long as Kyle Smith and the Cougs look to make more noise in the Pac-12. Right side. Bubba drives in and hammers. He wants the record for three. And it is. An all-time Cougar record. It's only on your home for Cougar Basketball. The Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. When you set up a savings goal with U.S. Bank, it grows with you. There's no limit to what you can crochet. I, I mean, can do. doesn't have to be crocheting, but it totally could be. Like the headphones you're listening to this ad with, you could totally crochet those. There's no telling where your savings goal will take you. Maybe you'll save enough for yarn to crochet your house or the whole town. Oh, right. doesn't have to be crochet related. Set up savings goals on the U.S. Bank mobile app, even for the wildest of dreams. U.S. Bank. We'll get there together. Equal Housing Lender. Member FDIC. Back out of here live. We're talking all kinds of things with Pat Chun. We've got Pat Chun. We'll have Kenny Etheridge. We'll have Coach Kyle Smith on in, in just a little bit. Uh, we were just talking NIL. We were talking about some of the, the recruiting highlights. Uh, it was a football season that if we were to go back, say, hey, what a start, right? Those three games, you win in Madison, right? The whole deal. And it got a little banged up, a little bit rugged. And then aside from the Apple Cup, heck of a finish. And now here we are at a bowl game, which could be what? What are you thinking for postseason? How much can we... Can you share? How much can we get a peek behind the curtain of the bowl discussion? Well, if I knew what was behind the curtain, I'd let you peek. Okay. Yeah, All right. But All right. the uh, um, a lot's going to depend on what happens. Well, I, I would say the Pac-12 champion is going to impact because uh, getting two teams, and I don't know if Bill was asking me. I don't know what the exact rule is, how many teams can get the New Year's Six. Uh, but getting two teams and in, in either one in the playoff and one, uh, one to the Rose Bowl helps us. Uh, and if USC loses and they don't get in, there's a chain reaction of events. So, um regardless it's it's what our seventh in a row yep. uh it's it's a great opportunity and and it, this is where programs stay ahead this is why winning teams continue to win and losing teams continue to lose that's why postseason is so important for men's and women's basketball and volleyball because uh that extra practice like every coach even if it's a even if we're on a, a accelerated schedule because of a pre-christmas bowl everyone does the same thing they're young they're young student athletes are gonna get a bulk of the practice time right it's at the best developmental period and it's 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 how programs stay sharp and the teams that stay home and go home it's a it's a wasted month for them so it, it's no matter where we end up we'll embrace it uh it'll be a it'll be a tough opponent whoever we're with and you know our league is i mean we ended up i mean you look at our schedule we lost to all the ranked teams in our league mm -hmm. so that's good and bad mm -hmm. you know the good part is a hey, that i mean we we played a tough schedule and uh and we know we're actually not that far off it's just there are things that jake knows that we got to address in, in the off season in terms of recruiting and uh the portal and then if we can get there it's it's you know it's it's really remarkable when you think about it, especially I was, I was talking to Eric Morris. I said, when you look back on this year 
and you see all the improvements with, with no depth on your offensive line, right. no depth at wide receiver. Nakia was gone a third of the season, yeah. and you had a first-time quarterback at this level. I said it was really amazing when you think about all the productivity and how much better we got and just think what's going to happen with another year in your system and, and the young guys coming in or, or you know, whatever newcomer we had. First year head coach. Yeah, first year head coach you on know, top of that. Yeah. Is Jay, I mean, you know, he's been here, yeah. but he hasn't been the head coach in earnest, yeah. right? Without the interim tag. And, yeah. Um, heck of a year. Heck of a year. In a lot yeah. of regards. Yeah. Absolutely. Right there with the Ducks. That's the game you yeah. want back. And yeah. you're right there that's with the Utes. Yeah. You want the, look where they are. Yeah, right? we can yeah. bring up bad memories. That's why Kyle doesn't like talking to you. You bring, <laughs> you bring up the bad memories. Kyle loves yeah. talking to me. <laughs> loves it. Can't get enough of it. Yeah. Uh, you, you had. Uh, you had a really tight game at USC, too. That was, that was what I was going to say. I mean, the, the, that game kind of got drawn out there in the fourth quarter, but yeah. you were right in it in the second half and the third quarter. You were at the top of the league. You, you really were. Well, I consider make a pretty pretty accurate debate or argument that the teams with greater depth than us are the ones that beat us. Huh. So it, it just comes down to we just got to it, – it's where we've missed the last couple of years in recruiting. It's where Kyle and Cammie have gotten gotten this the, their respective programs right Yeah, is is that they're able to recruit and develop. And, uh, you know, and then what, when, when things – when people leave, when you're not expecting – you, you, you kind of go back to the drawing board and figure out who fits well. And I think you'll see it like with men's basketball, um, you know, as the pieces of the puzzle continue to gel, I think everyone's going to be really pumped up with how, how the puzzle looks at the end of the year. I know you love three-point shooting. Yeah. So I, this has I, gone yeah, well. It's yeah. been a good t- couple of games yeah, for you. I was raised in an environment that, that uh, the, the, like I, was, I, I was told as a, as a kid, uh, the, more, the more you shoot, the less you turn it over. So oh, that's how bad of a ball hand. That's a good way to think so, of it. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, there's I'll, logic yeah, to so that. The way Jabe yeah. or Clay uh, shoot it up. Uh, <laughs> me and Bill Stevens were trying to hoping that Charlize would pad her scoring last night. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. I, just like I hope Cam looking fly. at that score. Like just let her get to 20 because yeah. we, we need national we need a national player of the year uh, uh, resume for her. Well, it's on yeah. the table. Yeah. It's on the table. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk to let's talk to Coach Etheridge about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Hey, she's got she had she's got a slide over. They reti- I saw they retired another jersey at Texas. Uh, last night, so Cammie, in, in Lubbock or yeah, in, no at, at, at University at, of Texas. At Texas. So yeah, oh, okay. for those who don't know, yeah, at, at yeah Cammy's name is up there with Kevin Durant, and they just retired they another. So when I saw that, I didn't. I, I apologize. I don't. I don't know the person's name that got their yeah. jersey retired, but I know Cammy's up there. So I love that you have to ask. Wait, which which place? Which, I know. <laughs> yeah, she's retired in multiple places. Yeah. So, so, yeah. And in the same high school gym with Elo. It's, it's, it's crazy. You can't make yeah, that it's up. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's just a <laughs> wild wild story. Yeah. Thank you for this time. All right. Thank you very much. All right. That's that's Pat Chan, our director of athletics. We'll talk ball next as we take a break here live at Zeppos. Spokane International Airport is a proud sponsor of Washington State University Athletics. The airport connects Cougar fans and alums with over 50 daily departures to 20 nonstop destinations provided by six major airlines, as well as one-stop connections to most major metropolitan centers throughout the U.S. Real-time arrival and flight departure information is available at SpokaneAirports.net. Spokane International Airport, when it's time to fly. Another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. You're listening to the U.S. Bank Cougar Coaches Show on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Coug fans, can't decide what to do with your late-night weekends? Why not Cosmic Bowling? Every Friday and Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. is Cosmic Bowling at Zeppo's. At a price designed with everyone in mind, we are your destination for music, disco lights, and, of course, bowling. Can't join us on the weekends? Zeppo's is the place to be for all ages every day of the week. With bowling, food, and drink specials, we offer prices that won't break the budget. You can even reserve your lane in advance with online reservations at Zeppo's.com. When looking for fun in Pullman, look no further than Zeppo's. College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free and available from wherever you get your favorite apps. Download the Varsity app today to have access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. The Varsity Podcast Network, now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today.
Back out of here live. We're talking ball. We've got Coach Cammy Etheridge. We just had our director of athletics, Pat Chun. We'll have Kyle Smith on in a little bit, a special edition of the coaches. So, Coach, great to talk to you. Thanks for doing this. Thanks. It's great to be here. Lots of uh, Coog pride and passion in the building. So, thanks for having me. Oh, Zeppos is the best. Hey, we, we've got a 5-1 and one record, yeah. right? 5-1 and one. now. I, I bring Coach up in the break. I say, Coach, congrats on the great start. Back-to-back NCAA tournaments, you're really, really good again. She goes, well, oh, there's one loss. There's one <laughs> loss. So, but how do you feel about your six games in, right? You're not into pack play yet. You've got a sense of identity. I know it evolves. But give me the state of the union right now in the season in the team. I felt really good going into the season and, and just the way our team prepared and, and practiced and trained during the summer. I really thought we had a chance to be better, uh, started the season pretty well, and then just laid an egg and, and really fast up against a, a team that I don't think should beat us but had an exceptional night in Brigham Young. And I'm still talking about that with my team. I'm still telling them how mad I am at them for for just not being quite sharp and, and quite on edge and what it takes to win. And, and uh, we, we had 17 rebounds in an entire game against Brigham Young. And, and then the next night we had to play – uh, Troy, who was the number one rebounding team in the country, and we out-rebounded them. So the message got sent, which is the point of non-conference play, is, is learn about yourself, learn what you're weak at, and, and try to improve those things and, and try to get to the point where, you know, you can play anybody, but you're going to show up every single time that you step on the floor and you're going to be prepared to play and, and be your best. I know you never want to lose, right? But in the, in the unlikely event, you're going to go about 40-0, and 0, right? <laughs> Early losses against somewhat quality opponents or, or, you know, maybe if you just didn't play that great, can be learning experiences. I mean, they can be identity checks, right, for players. There's a certain validation to going, oh, we, we need to do X, Y, or Z to win. It doesn't just happen. Right, right. It's funny. I mean, uh, Brigham Young, statistically, I th- we have this program analytics that, that literally said if you take the same shots, you guys get the same shots, You're gonna, uh, Washington State's going to win 94% of the time. Is that right? Wow. So that's, they had an exceptional night, wow. which happens in basketball. It doesn't help us. It doesn't make us feel any better. Uh, they will probably not win very many games, and it will end up being a bad loss for us. Yeah. But, you know, we have a lot of teams that we're playing that are, are high quality. Last night was an example. South Dakota State had beaten Louisville, a top-10 team, uh, played – UCLA really, really close. Uh, they're a quality opponent, and to get that kind of win was, was huge. And to, to do it in that fashion is great. So that's the point of non-conference, and then clearly it, it prepares us for whatever we're going to face in, in, the, in the Pac-12. Haven't played South Dakota State a lot, but we're 0-3 against them in the program's history. That was, that was the first win, 1-3. Now 17-4 and against non-conference opponents at home in Beasley Coliseum. And I mean that in the Coach Etheridge era, the, the Cougars are, which is great. I mean, that's a, that's a really – 17-4 and four is a really, really good mark. I, I would imagine you feel pretty good about that. Well, I do, yeah. But you're worried about yeah. the four? But you, no. <laughs> you go, I want to be 21-0. No, no. I mean, it's hard. Like, when we took over the program, I don't – we were the underdog in a lot of games. Yep. So, But it doesn't matter. Non-conference scheduling is just to try to get your team confident. You don't want to – beat them up. You don't want to play everybody and lose and not have any confidence going into Pac-12. But you also, you know, you want to challenge yourself and you want to play against different styles and you want to be prepared for what you're going to face. So uh, we need some quality opponents. We need to be prepared because we're going to face some big dogs that that you you need to know how you're going to play against those people. And and, and again, the challenge of our team is can we grow in the the physicality part of the game because we've, we've, we've lost that battle a long time. Uh, can we grow in the the toughness side of it? Doing doing plays that are real that that just exude toughness. And and lately we've we've started to show that the ball doesn't always go in the basket, but toughness and and competitiveness and and uh, that kind of thing does travel. And that's that's the thing that we can hang our hats on a little bit. So I'm I'm really proud of of the fact that this team's kind of bought into that, and I think it's going to help us down the road. To what degree do you lean on the analytics, that program you said you punched that data into? And, and uh, that's pretty interesting that you can know the misses really generally go in. Well, not like Kyle and his program. And <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't think I, I totally am, am completely in that world, but it's it's a part of our world, and we really – you know, clearly you have to have an idea of what the other team that you're playing, what they look to do and how they score and how, where they score and, and their effectiveness in that and how you're going to combat that. So, 
you know, we, I have a great staff. I have someone who is, who thinks that way and is a little mathematician and, and can, can do all that and can present something to me that I can understand and kind of put it into to reality. But, you know, it's, it's a part of it and, and you need to use it to your advantage. Um, I don't think it'll ever take away from the, what your gut is sure. and what your feel is, but, um, uh, you know, it's it's something that uh, I think we're going to have to use, and, and obviously we do a little bit. All right, we've got some write-in questions for you. Let's do this. <laughs> so let's take a break. We'll get the write-ins. If, if folks come here at Zeppos in person and they write questions in, we take them. That's that's the rule here that we live by here at Zeppos Live. We're talking with Coach Etheridge, women's basketball segment here at Zeppos. As we get set, we'll continue with Coach Etheridge next. Time to redo this basement. Yeah. A home gym, movie theater, model train utopia. Or yoga studio. I'm flexible-ish. Great. I'll just use the U.S. Bank mobile app so we can plan it out. Which way are you leaning? Setting a savings goal or applying for a home improvement loan? I say we look at both options. Right here in the app. Budget for a really good home, Jim. We deserve it. (laughs) Noted. Help for today, planning for tomorrow. That's what U.S. Bank is for. U.S. Bank. We'll get there together. Equal housing lender member FDIC. Snow! Me! No money! That's right, Spokane. The $60,000 Snow Me the Money giveaway is coming to Northern Quest. Bob, tell them what they could win. Well, Steve, there's 20 grand in cash, plus a chance to spank old man winter with two new Polaris snowmobiles. Don't make it weird, Bob. Maybe just tell them to play daily and visit northernquest.com for details about Snow Me the Money! This is the U.S. Bank Cougar Coaches Show on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do... Do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2020 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Back at it live here. We're talking ball with Coach Etheridge as we get set for basketball season. It's the end of football season. It's winter. It means it's basketball season. Basketball. We're talking ball. That's right. Earn your bragging rights at Northern Quest with more slot machines, table games, restaurants, lounges, and luxury hotel rooms than anyone else in the region. Northern Quest, yes, the best. More at northernquest.com. All right, Coach, what makes – this is a write-in question for Coach. What makes your team's chemistry so strong? Mm-hmm. Well – I, I honestly, I, I just think it's it's so cliche, but you have to work on it every single day, just like you do anything else. You have to uh, you have to give your kids a vision, and you have to tell them if they don't know it, you got to incorporate their buy-in to uh, the vision that that are kind of your non-negotiables. And and for us, you know, it it involves uh, we have five core values that are kind of built around respect and respect the game and how hard it is to be great at the game, but that also falls into anything else you're doing, academics, competitive. You have to want to compete. You have to want to get better. You Individually, you have to beat your yourself from the day before. Uh, trust and, and just building the relationships of being trustworthy. As a coach, I need to be. As players, we need to be. Uh, toughness, we brought that into our program mentally, physically, emotionally, We've got to build that every single day because that's what the great teams have. And then accountability is our last one, which no really, no one really wants to be held accountable. But we try to get that real buy-in to all those things. And we think if we hit on that every single day in some capacity and, vi- and talk about it and, and present it to our kids that by the time they leave, they're about those things. And they're actually coaching our young ones about those things. And, and I think if we can do those things, we're, we have a foundation built that we put some talent on top of those things and, and great things can happen for us. Give me, give me the breakdown on, on your philosophy on instilling those five things. And maybe this is kind of what the question is, is asking in some way also is like, 
is chemistry with those five things built on the court in practice you're playing? Or is it the extreme, like, are we going to the ropes course and we're going to do trust falls and we're going to do all that in the off season? Like, to what degree is that a balance for you as a coach? You know, uh, honestly, we put behaviors around all of those core values. So, I mean, everybody knows if you're disrespectful, we put behaviors on what respect looks like. Hmm. You know, if you want to respect the game, you want to respect practice, how do you walk into the gym? If you want to be a, uh, respect your teammate, how do you treat them? How do you communicate with them? If you want to respect your professor, you show up on time. You're in the first three rows. So we put behaviors around them, and those become the uh, – we're behavior cops. For the first few years, we were just like, nope, that's not it. Yep, that <laughs> looks good. Nope, nope. And, and then eventually those things become our players, and – and you can do that. You can also go, what does disrespect look like? And if that's rolling your eyes or not looking at someone or, or walking off the court or not handling conflict. I mean, so it's really, really easy, but we build it and we talk about it. And, and COVID was good for that because we Zoomed and we, we just we built that out and we gave them examples and we built, you know, PowerPoints. And, and, and I'm telling you, there's just – you know, and it hits home because kids want to be good. They know kind of right and wrong. They understand that, and they want to buy into something in the vision, and then they want to hold that standard up. And, and I think that's what great coaches and programs do. And then the coaches can get out of the way, and they can quit being the behavior cops because the kids do it themselves, and, and that's when good things happen. And that's, I think, where we are in our program where, you know, the people talking in our gym a lot of times is, is Charlie Sledger Walker. I mean, she's coaching our team as much as – you know, sometimes I am, and I love that because that's a voice that understands what we are and who we are and what we our standard is. And so when it gets to that point, you're in a good shape. Well, she's at north of 20 points and five boards a game. It's not just, uh, just that she's kind, but that she's really <laughs> productive. She's really good. She's a player of the year candidate. And so you've got yourself a, a, you know, a player who can, has led you to the NCAA tournament right back, back to back times, but I would imagine you feel like can compete with anybody in the country. Well, she's, she is a phenomenal, phenomenal player in every phase of the game. Like, she plays both sides of the ball. Um, you know, her IQ is thinking two and three plays ahead, sometimes to her detriment. Really? You know, she tries to create a little bit too much that's not there. But, you know, great players do that. Uh, but a great teammate, a different leader than her sister. You mm -hmm. know, she's not as loud or forceful. She's more diplomatic maybe. But um, she is a fantastic leader. Uh, but I do, yeah, she, I think her, the limit that she can get better, there's, a, there's still a, a limit to I mean, I think her, her ceiling is, is way high and she can get better. But, gosh, she comes every single day, wants to be great, expects to be great, and holds everybody to that standard. So she's a dream to coach, as you can imagine, just like it's a dream to watch her play, and, and we want her on the court as much as we can. All right, well, we've got one more right in here before, I, before I, I cut you loose and we, we stop putting you to work here at Zeppos. The, this dovetails really well, and this is uh, speaking to what you had referenced about going through COVID and the things. You, when we run into players like Emma and Grace around town, we're always impressed with the quality of their character. How much do you prioritize character in players? It seems like that's paramount from what I'm hearing. Well, it, it is. It is um, – Again, when you look at those two players, I mean, they, you know, coaches, a lot of times we talk about players that transform from their immature and then they grow into these awesome, mature, tough, and look what they've become. They came, they came in this way and then they do this. Then you have high character people like Emma and Grace who come in and basically require no energy from you and you don't talk about some of that. And, and they've just been unbelievable uh, representatives of our program, hardworking, dedicated, loyal, all the things that I think we appreciate. And, and, and they want to be here. They love it here. They love the community. I mean, it's exactly what we want to build our program on. And we want recruits to come in and listen and watch them because they'll show them what it's like to be in this community. So it is everything to us to get great character, great people in our program. Clearly, we have to get competitive players and great talent in our program, and, and it's got to combine with the character side of it. But I think we've balanced that really well, and I think we're, we're in a great spot moving forward. And so Friday, December 2nd, you've got 6 p.m. tip. You have Montana in we Beasley. Need, yep, yep. You, then you're at Portland, and then you start the early league play games. You, you, you have a big one. Yeah. You, you yeah. go to Seattle. You go play the. You go play the guys on the on the west side. The gals on the west side of the state. You got Jackson State, Corpus Christi, at Houston, and then pack play. And, yeah. then, and then you're into it. Yeah. And a few of those are at home, so we'd love to get people out to our, our arena. Obviously, we had a, a great win last night and and uh, an unbelievable snowstorm. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> that kept right. people away from the gym. That's so right. we, bad luck in that, but again, we got the win, so that's important. And really appreciate fans and people coming to support this team because I, I do think they're they're worth it, and and this community would love to 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 um, adopt them and and follow them and and make sure that they're having a, a you know the best time and imaginable being a, a student athlete here at. at at Washington State. Thank you, Coach. Six o'clock Friday, next game. Six o'clock, Montana. Six o'clock Friday. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. That's Go Coach Cougs. Etheridge live here at Zeppos. We're talking ball. We'll have Kyle Smith on next. Hey, Coog fans, can't decide what to do with your late-night weekends? Why not Cosmic Bowling? Every Friday and Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. is Cosmic Bowling at Zeppos. At a price designed with everyone in mind, we are your destination for music, disco lights, and, of course, bowling. Can't join us on the weekends? Zeppos is the place to be for all ages every day of the week. With bowling, food, and drink specials, we offer prices that won't break the budget. You can even reserve your lane in advance with online reservations at Zeppos.com. When looking for fun in Pullman, look no further than Zeppos. Spokane International Airport is a proud sponsor of Washington State University Athletics. The airport connects Cougar fans and alums with over 50 daily departures to 20 nonstop destinations provided by six major airlines, as well as one-stop connections to most major metropolitan centers throughout the U.S. Real-time arrival and flight departure information is available at SpokaneAirports.net. Spokane International Airport, when it's time to fly. You're listening to Cougar Basketball, Cougar Basketball from the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Your one stop for all college sports is the Varsity app and the brand new Varsity Network website, thevarsitynetwork.com. Keep up with your favorite teams and the rest of college sports no matter where you are with thevarsitynetwork.com. Live and on demand broadcasts, your favorite college centric podcasts with stories and video around college sports and your favorite teams. Be sure to download the Varsity app and check out the brand new Varsity Network website, thevarsitynetwork.com. This is Cougar Basketball. Kicks it in the lane. Day. Hammer time. Two-hand flush filling the lane. He wants Mullins to give him his eight three. Oh, Tune in all season long as Kyle Smith and the Cougs look to make more noise in the Pac-12. Right side. Bubba drives in and hammers. He wants the record for three. Oh. And it is an all-time Cougar record. It's only on your home for Cougar Basketball. The Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Back at it live here talking ball. We're live at Zeppos with the head men's basketball coach, Kyle Smith. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, great seeing you. Yeah, long time no see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we've got ourselves a uh, pack play starting up on Thursday. Yeah. How about that? You're going to Eugene, Oregon to play the Ducks. Yes. Which is never easy, although you almost plucked them last year. Yeah, you were right we, there. We played pretty well last yeah. year. We've had pretty good success, but uh, watch them on film. It's like, wow, they're pretty impressive. Uh, huge. Yeah. Huge and fo- we've been hearing about him, Folly Dante, right? He hadn't yeah, played yeah. a ton, and now he is playing a lot. He's a big boy. Yeah, no, he's still questionable though for Thursday. Well, the whole team. So that's no. that's the next thing is who's going to play? They're in. They're Listen, in- I don't feel sorry for them at all. <laughs> all right, they they're they're welcome to the club. Yeah, right. Welcome to the club. Uh, you, you you had uh, you were really banged up at Prairie View. Yeah. Um, and you were a little bit banged up uh, last game. Got a got a heck of a sh- shooting performance. I mean, the last two games smushed together for Jay Mullins. It's great. Tell me, ha- when's the last time? Did Franco do that at Columbia? You know, like, Franco had some moments. I was wondering. <laughs> if you've yeah. seen our practice, yeah. So t- t- tell some folks here who Franco is, uh, by the well, way. Franco's yeah. our graduate manager, played for me at Columbia. He's working on getting his uh, master's in business administration, and he's able to uh, – um, you know, he's around the gym and managing, and he, he can really shoot it. He was one of the nation's best shooters yeah, for he's, you. He's just, well, yeah. he, he worked for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I should point that out. By the, oh, by the way. Yeah, but yeah. yeah so he was a like shooting coach for the Cleveland Cavaliers, and um, he got out of that and kind of researched. I said, come out. This is a true story. I said, during COVID, I said, hey, man, you didn't know what he's doing. I said, just come out to Pullman. and We'd hang out. I'll pay for it. He never left. He just stayed. <laughs> he just stayed. Said, so we got him. It's true. And uh, he's from Jersey. He's a New York guy. If yeah. you've ever met him, and uh, he just he really loves the community. He loves the place, and he's he's great to have a, a former player that's really embraced what we're doing. And it's good good for our our guys to lean on him. I never bit. told him that he does not have a Jersey personality. He's oh, a like, very easy going oh, guy. Lord. He's he is Jer- easy. He's more, way more Jersey than you, brother. Is he? A maybe. Maybe. Oh, so. you did, are you being serious? Yeah, I thought he was oh, just dude. Whew. 
dude, he's Jersey. Is he? Right, the, well, the, the yoga is so he could. So Calm it down. So okay. He's yeah. So like he's a, yeah. Like he's a yogi hanging out in Pullman. Who no, happens no, to shoot no, the ball. No, like, that's no, not no, Jersey. No, no, no. Okay. Franco. Right. Frankie. Frankie. Yeah. Frankie Bones is what they call him. Because so he's need, got need, it. Don't got say it. no more. He's, yeah, yeah. You really haven't brought it out then. No, not enough. You, clearly. No, no, no. definitely we'll, we'll not. Th- we'll spend some time in Eugene. We'll come circle back January yeah, yeah, 6th, yeah. our first first show here no, at no, Zeppo's no, in earnest. He, he's Jersey, I no doubt. It. And when he com- So he's a competitor. He when he plays for uh, Kyrie's coach, whatever. Uh, no, he not Boyle. I want to say Boyle. He played for Danny Hurley. Yeah. Uh. Enough said. Danny, he played Danny, played, yeah. Danny Hurley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. played for Danny, yeah. and then he yeah. played. For, no, he didn't play for Boyle. No, yeah. The other guy coach played yeah. for, played with Kyrie. Well, that's club. Cool. Anyway, um, we're off task. A little bit it happens occasionally. That yeah. happens sometimes. Uh, um, I want to talk. I want to ask you about NAL. I asked, sure. Pat, I asked Pat about it. Um, it's a hot button issue. I, yeah, you know, it's it's, it's a it's the wild current world you live in right now. Yeah, no, I know. I've uh, it, it's definitely been on an education uh, tour. Everyone just kind of tell it's it's changed the nature of what we're doing. And I don't know if what they even what my skill set is for, um, <laughs> to be honest. And, and I just think that uh, just try and tell people what's going on around the country. Um, and, you know, we're competing against these people. So we have to kind of figure out where we sit in this. What What's our niche? Where are we going to be? And, you know, we've had some collectives help us. Um, Crypto Cougs have been uh, partnering up with some of our guys and, and trying to help facilitate that. And, um you know, and I, and I tell people, I said, you know, not everyone, in my experience with people in the community and people who alums, they're like, you know, no one really likes the idea that guys are getting paid and it's kind of spoils this idea of the student athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's what really attracted about college athletes. I think everyone gets behind these guys going to school. But, but I, you know, my thing, I'm, I'm, you know, I've been very fortunate coaching. I never thought I'd imagine earn this kind of living coaching basketball. And sure. so it's become a billion dollar industry and, um, these student athletes, in my opinion, they, you know, they're entitled to some of that a little mm-hmm. bit, and willing to work for it and help them, and they're they're part of this. They're a big part of why people come to watch the uh, guys play, and um, you know, everyone's trying to navigate it, and that plus the portals made things challenging. But uh, like you know, I said that the spring, I said it'll be a little musical chairs, and you know, there's still so many spots available. And right. You just kind of got to mix it. And our idea, I think, Cami hit on it too, is like what makes this community neat is that. People really embrace you. They give a lot. They don't ask a lot. They give a lot and, and, and love people that come here. And so it's getting guys that want to, you know, invest in, in Pullman, invest in Washington State, and then it's and then it's a really neat experience, you know, when you, you get the guys like Taylor Rochester who, who came here and was only here three years, but he loves his place. He reaches out, Clay, um, he came to talk to our guys and said, hey, this is uh, three best years of his life. And I told our guys, hey, he's won three – at the time he'd won three world championships. He's telling you his three best years are time spent – and in fact, him and Steph came right to Zeppos. Cheap plug. <laughs> they came there. They did. Hello. You know, but but that's that the college experience was neat, and you know, so we're navigating it, and uh, you know, just got to keep getting the word out what's going on, and and I think if some people people are a little shocked what some other programs are doing, and I, <laughs> I referenced that, and it's like it's it's uh, it's the nature of the beast. I don't know. I loved what Carlos Daniel said, and. Uh, He's down in Texas, and he's uh, you know one of the all-time greats, right? Yeah, could could really really fill it up. Great rebounder, and a really smart guy. He's got a PhD. He's t- teaching now. He's great. Yeah, and you know he was just coaching at Vanderbilt. Right, yep. he was with Jerry Stackhouse in the SEC in the belly of the beast. Yep. Right at Vanderbilt, he's played in a really tight game against Kentucky last year in the SEC tournament. Scotty Pippen's son, the whole thing, yep. and he's and his message to all these kids after all that with all that context, he goes, stay here. He goes, this place is great. No. He goes, this is the best place. Stay, I, be a Coug, love being a Coug. That, and he's yeah. got context. He's no, been no, all no, over no, the place. No, no, no. He, he's, he's really impacted. So many – I never – whenever we run into a guy that played for a program, played Washington State, I'll have him talk to our guys. And without a doubt, I don't coach him up. They all hit on the same points. I say that it's the best time of life. These are relationships that have lasted a lifetime. And I, th- I do think it's unique to – we are isolated. And you, anyone that comes to Pullman and, and, and been at Washington State – it's a different experience. And so when you go out in the other parts of the world and you see each other, you, you, there's a common bond there. And, and they've all said the same thing. It's a, it's a blast and did it. And, you know, I'm educating Clay on what NIL is. True story. Here's what's happening. True yeah. story. He's whatever. Doing, he just, just, I'm watching him. I got one eye on just, right there. Just, just, just took a shot. Yeah. Yeah. 
They're doing. They're down three. Yeah, they'll they're be down, all right. They'll be right there. You're going to be there. That's where. That's where the game is, right? Oh, uh, I don't think there? so. Is it not where the Mavericks play? Oh, okay. uh, are we playing them where the Mavericks play? I could be wrong. I have to. I'm I haven't gone. Sure. I haven't gone that far ahead in my no, life. I'm, I'm, I'm just off of, yeah. I'm on Eugene. Yeah, yeah, right. And that that one. Uh, little side note, like when John texts me, and goes, "Gosh, you see that Florida score? They played West Virginia. Uh, I, I think I they know. blasted them. Yeah. I said, I'm no comment because you know Todd's. Yeah, said, sure. Because yeah. I think. Baylor's probably 12 points favored oh, West against, Virginia. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, like, yeah No yeah, comment. Yeah. So that Big 12 is a real. No, the Big 12's been great. Real, the Big 12's been really, while. really good. Yeah, they've been a really good year. Look, we're up, we're up against it. We've got to take right. a break, come back. We're yeah, live yeah, here. This isn't an hour. This, I got a little segment. Yeah, we just got a little touch, a little scotch. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little taste, a little, yeah, yeah. little flavor. All right, we'll take no a break. Come back. we got trivia. We'll come back live. We'll come back live. We do. We'll take a break. Come back live next. That to do list you have needs one more thing chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge-watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog, because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2020 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Running a business is a lot of work. Luckily, I've got a great partner. Oh, I thank you. I meant U.S. Bank. I knew that. U.S. Bank Business Essentials is a huge help to us. Totally. Their comprehensive point-of-sale system does it all. Tracks inventory, manages schedules, customizes orders, plus all the regular banking stuff. If only it could make coffee. Nah, that's your job. From point-of-sale to quick loans, we have many ways to make your business boom. That's what U.S. Bank is for. U.S. Bank. We'll get there together. Equal housing lender member FDIC. You're listening to the U.S. Bank Cougar Coaches Show on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Spokane International Airport is a proud sponsor of Washington State University Athletics. The airport connects Cougar fans and alums with over 50 daily departures to 20 nonstop destinations provided by six major airlines, as well as one-stop connections to most major metropolitan centers throughout the U.S. Real-time arrival and flight departure information is available at SpokaneAirports.net. Spokane International Airport, when it's time to fly. Back live here talking ball with Kyle Smith. We get set for Coug Hoops. Uh, we've got ourselves uh, uh, Thursday in Eugene, the women's team Friday, home against Montana. Washington State would like to thank Crimson and Gray for their continued support of Coug Athletics. Head to bookstore.com to get the latest in Coug apparel. No vowels, B-K-S-T-R.com for the latest in Coug apparel. All right, uh, I'll tell you what, let's do, let's do a little trivia. Sure. How do you feel about that? Uh, Luke, you want to fire the music? There we go. I did prep. I just want you to know. You never, you never do. All you right. never do. I yeah. just want you to know. Um, oh. You may know this. May. As a fact, last game, the, uh, the Cougar basketball team set a record for made threes in one game. Okay. 19 of them. Two times prior, they had made 18 threes in a game. Can you name one of the two years that that might have happened? Can you name the, the, the two other times That's they set the, the record? Question ever. Two other times. <laughs> two other times they did 18 t- threes. Was Kyle Smith the coach? No. No, no, no. no. Not, not interesting. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, but, but, but. Two no, other well, times. You know, but so it's three point lines with Mark. Ernie, Ernie's team no, showed no, up. No, no, what did Ernie's no. team? I, I, don't, I have no idea. Pass. All right. Uh, o2. <laughs> O o two against Gonzaga, Marcus oh. Moore had forty two points in that ball game. Lefty, and then in uh, nineteen ninety, Benny Seltzer. Benny, they had eighteen. One twenty one to eighty two, they beat Seattle U. Ooh. In nineteen ninety, thirty two years ago, the Cougs hit eighteen threes in a game. I, it was I, Benny I, Seltzer, and then it was Marcus Moore 
leading the charges. Probably, Eddie Hill was probably with Benny. Or maybe not. Nah, I don't know. He made maybe. A lot of yeah, maybe. Maybe. But that was a box. We couldn't find the box for 32 years ago. It was a, that was a hard one. Seattle, that that, Seattle you might have been their little NAI bid, too. Game was in team. Bowler. Game was in Bowler. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Did you see the volleyball game? I, that's, I know I it's a great Pat, <laughs> Pat will get met Pat's here. I'm like, hey, I'm always, I'm always trying to get to Bowler. They get, that, that volleyball game was crazy. So the other games that season were yeah. not that game. Uh, and you're right. I don't know what level Seattle U was in yeah, 32 whatever, years ago. It's great. Whatever it was. But they scored 82. I mean, they, they, you know, no, no. It was, it was no joke. But uh, All right. they, they, and you didn't like that question. Eh. Is that right? Uh, not you're better. Our best I, I just think you're better than well, that. Well, it was a little bit. Chaz, was a little, I, mean, so I appreciate I agree. that. Everybody, Chaz is a little better than that. We're a little slapped together. I, mean, so it's, it's, I was just excited to hear the music again. I mean, it's, first of all, it's about basketball. Yes. I, was, yeah. I want something. Yeah. Oh, I want right. Something you're right. Not, right. Right. Give we, me pop like, culture. Octopus is an yeah, answer. It's, it's, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, something. How hot is the sun. Yeah. Right. Stuff like that. Yeah. I'm better in that arena. I get that. I get that. I get enough basketball. Yeah. No, there no. And we'll have plenty of those. We'll do All right. Ken Palm. You can go to little Ken Palm stats. What do you got? What do you got? We question, we'll move on. We'll, it's a short, this is a short story. It is today. a short show. By the way, uh, I, which reminds me, coaches shows with Kyle Smith start after the new year, every Tuesday, January 6th. So after the new year, I think the first Tuesday after when we're available, okay. I think we're on the road. I forget what happened. But January 6th through pack play. Awesome. Here at Zeppos, 6 to 7 p.m. Awesome. Uh, we don't know which bowl we'll be at yet. Okay. Whatever that bowl is. In all likelihood, there will be a show the night before. So we need okay, to figure great. that out. So what, oh, that would be great. What, so, what are our options? What are we looking at? Uh, Holiday? With, so, here's, so, if it, so if we get um, – San Diego? I, this is all very informal. Are right? you invited? So don't hold me to it. TBD on that. Very TBD on whether or not I'm invited. I hope so. I hope to be there. Uh, possibly the L.A. Bowl. December seventeenth. Where do they play that at? In the, where the Rams play, where the SoFi, oh, so okay. yep, in Los Angeles. Yep. That'd be December seventeenth. Um, I think. Is that the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl? Uh, yes. Okay. So the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. You don't know him, do you? I don't know him, Jimmy. I know Simmons. Bill Jim, Simmons. Bill Simmons. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But I, that you don't know. not Jimmy Kimmel though. No. All right. Do they know it? Is that? They. Bill Simmons used to be a writer for Kimmel. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. How about that? I thought he was yeah. just in his starting a blog in his mom's yeah, basement or something. Long, oh, okay. Did, yeah, there you go. So you don't, yeah, no, anyway. I'm not, go ahead. All right. Uh, so maybe so maybe LA Bowl, right? All right, right. There's as of today, there are three Pac-12 teams in the top 12, which it, of the of the playoff. I heard a little bit of that, Pat. Talking if about it, three yeah, go yeah. to the New Year's Six, I don't know if that's possible because the 12th is usually the um, highest ranked uh, group of five. Yeah. So, but depending on what happens in all these championship games, if three go, we could get bumped to a different bowl nice. in the pack. What that would be is really hard to predict God. because if, if, you know, we were just at the Sun Bowl, so it's very unlikely to get invited to the Sun Bowl. If, well, we actually just were not at the Holiday Bowl too long ago, so does it go there? But I, then you got Vegas, and I don't know if that's going to happen because of the pack hierarchy, so it becomes very muddy. But if not, if the other way, if the, you know, if pack teams all get knocked out of the top 12, and, and the LA Bowl is not an option. There are like three other bowls that it could be. It could be Frisco, it could be Fort Worth, it could be Tampa, and those are near Christmas ish. So, but I think that's and that's generally how this goes. Kind of comes down to the wire, and you don't you, really you know. name ten cities. That's all of on the table. Yeah, yeah. Tampa, Frisco, Fort Worth, LA. You know, and then the and then the pack tie-ins. So there you go. You Got know. it. I, and I know you love football. I truly. I do. I, I know. I know you're all you're all I you're do. locked in. Um, hey, Washington State Athletics, we'd like to thank Crimson and Gray. Mention this for their continued support of Cougar Athletics. Head to bookstore.com to get the latest in Cougar apparel. That's B-K-S-T-R dot com. Uh, this question here okay. is a write-in. This, this is a hard one. Like, We've kind of done this before. What is it? What's your starting five for the all-time greatest history of basketball team? Oh, greatest, the, like Mount Rushmore plus one? Yeah, that's a hard one. Starting, starting five? All right, Jordan. Yeah. And this. I mean, there's some personal bias here, but you want – you know, you got to fit together, too. Magic. Okay. I'm throwing Magic. Okay. I'm going to go – I'm going to throw Larry in there. Okay. That's my perimeter. All right. That'll work. Yeah. You're going to go Hakeem. I mean, I love You're Hakeem. Got, get, I love Hakeem, yeah. but I might have to go – I mean, one of the most disrespected careers of all time is Kareem. Kareem. It's, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. So, and then who am I supposed to throw in there for that? Power four. Timmy, you go Timmy Duncan. You go. I mean, he's pretty awesome. He was he's a pretty big good. time winner. He was pretty good. Good basketball. I feel like player. I'm left out of some really good players. Probably. Yeah. Who did I leave out? I mean, oh, and modern day guys, I guess LeBron. Yeah, you could. Right. I think I throw LeBron oh, in there. Yeah. At the, the four. I, I, yeah. The four. Just, yeah. Magic LeBron, Michael, Larry. Good team. 
It's a good team. That was good enough defensively. It's huge. <laughs> not, Kareem. Not to hear like you. They're not good. I don't know. MJ. No, I, I like it. <laughs> I I prefer, I, I, I've been building this thing as a defensive juggernaut. My preference is just to That's make what I was shots. about to ask you. I was about to ask you. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you've been shooting the ball at an incredible clip. Justin Powell is second in America in assist to turnover. 27 he assists had to four. four turnovers yesterday at practice. Is that right? So you explained that to me. I, had, I can't. He had as many practice. So anyway, got on him. But anyway, yeah, no, no. He's, he's, his assist turnover was great. He doesn't shoot enough, to be honest. Uh, Jay's been shooting it really well. Bamba's been – we talked about them. Bamba's been – Phenomenal shooting. Great so, percentage. Yeah. Um, he and Mullins both have been fantastic. I think they're top 10 in the country, both yeah, of them. And DJ hasn't shot it well, but he can shoot. Yeah. And then Andre, um, you know. How's Jill, he doing? Andre uh, Yakovsky. A uh, couple weeks still, okay. probably. Yeah. Okay. That would be nice to have. But, um, you know, and, and Mo's going to start scoring a lot more because I just think defenses are going to be extending themselves a little bit. And Mo's going to have a little more space. They've been doubling him and. Tagging him on every roll and making it really difficult, and that, you know, not known about us. So you know, Jabe's been running loose a little bit, and I think that'll change moving forward. But uh, it's been a fun group. You know, we had a really rough trip on the road there, and growing pains hopefully. And uh, we're looking at another tough, tough road game Thursday. But uh, hopefully, we've, we've grown. We've had a couple good ones in a row. This stretch here, you know, Northern Kentucky is picked to win the Horizon. Northern Kentucky's really good. I know. They come in here to be – fans Fans don't know, usually no, know no. Northern Kentucky. So no. December 7th, UNLV, Baylor, and then the Hawaii. That's a rugged, rugged non-con. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's rugged. It really <laughs> no, is. No, it'll be fun. It's going to be really fun. No, this group's fun. They're going to be fun. We're going to get those young ones going. We'll be good. Thanks to Pat and Coach Etheridge and to you. Thank you, Coach. And everybody here at Zeppos. It's a really fast show. Jared Frank Uber is the man behind the camera. Jerry Kylo gets us on the air. Luke Hallett back in the studios. We'll try to do better to Kyle's trivia tastes uh, in know, future I, shows. I apologize. Thank a little you. cranky. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Overcoming yeah. a little cold. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I just expect more of you. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. It's a high bar. It's a high it bar. Is. January it is. 6th, next basketball show. We'll have a bowl show somewhere at some point when we figure out what's going on with that. Thank you, guys. Go Cougs. Go Cougs.